Welcome to um, the BBPA Roundtable Discussion and Q&A 2.0. Um, I don't know if you were around for the first one last Friday, uh, where we had you know, a couple of you guys, I don't know if you were around, but we had a couple of you and we answered questions and we shared tips. And we're going to do the same thing today, just to be sure that you put in your best, best, best application before the deadline. The deadline is in a couple of days, that's on Wednesday. And so we want to be sure that you have all the answers you need and, uh, you know, just to put in your best application. And so I'm just going to ask Nadine to just quickly give us a few words, just talk to us about BBP, about scholarship and uh, advice for some of us who are here now. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me well? Yes. Good thumbs up if you can hear. Awesome. So I'm from a family of 14 children, so I love lots of people. It's just, in, it's just, it's just, it's just my, my natural way. And so when I saw that there were 1,400, I think the count today was at 1,400 applications in the system. It's, it's 1,500 now. <laughs> well, it's 1,500 now. See, Ed, you've got big work ahead of you, right? Yeah. Scary. <laughs> yes, exactly. But this is good. It, you know, what it means, it means that more of us are wanting to go on to post-secondary studies and we know the value of an education and it's important. So I want to thank you for that. You know, just, you know, being at the table, putting that application in is a, is a big first step. Um, and, and, I, and for that, I'm, 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 I'm thrilled and grateful. So the BBPA uh, is an organization that has been around for 38 years and we work to create opportunities for black businesses and address equity in our society across Canada. And we do that through our programs. And part of our programs is the scholarship program. And within our scholarship uh, program, uh, scholarship, uh, there's, there's three programs. Uh, one is a financial literacy because we believe that managing your finances and knowing about money is important. And it's, it's, it's an, also an important part of your student, uh, your academic career, that you, you, you budget and manage your money well. The other part of our program is a mentorship piece, which we believe, and we, it, it'll be with York University in, uh, through a circle of care around just providing you with the resources and support you need as you go through uh, your academic career. So when you're in January and you feel like you need some help, somebody to talk to you, or just navigating getting some particular path through that program, we're here for you as well. And then last but certainly not least is the HR um, program, which prepares you for a job or entrepreneurship. So I, I strongly advise um, each of you to participate. And, and it's, it's a criteria of the scholarship actually, is that you participate in, in you know, one or two of these programs that we, that we have. We're here to support you. We've done an incredible job all year long of getting the funds in order to give to black students so they can advance. And this year we're very blessed. We've, we've done uh, our scholarship fund is very, um, I mean, it's not enough because, you know, there's 1,500, but it's more than we've had in the past. And so this is a great foundation which to stand on. So I encourage everyone to apply. Everyone to apply regardless of where you're at in your academic career. You know, they say life will give you what you ask. So I'm encouraging you all to ask. Yeah, um, we, we have a few, uh, many scholarships, but you know, we want to thank TD Bank for coming, um, for being with us for many, many years. And we have the TD scholarship. We have Majuri, who's a new scholarship partner who is coming on board as well this year. So we're very thankful. We have the Stanley Julian scholarship, a scholarship um, provided by the Donald Reed estate. And for the first time, we have an LGBTQ um, area in that, in that scholarship portfolio. We have the Denim Jolly scholarship, and we also have the Remy and Tori Ojo scholarship that gives to an applicant in, in, in STEM program, and also the province of Ontario, and many others as well. If you look on the website, you'll see the whole roster of scholarships that we have available. There's been a lot of questions. We're here, Uju is here to answer all your questions. And we have the scholarship chair, Ed Del Sol, Edmund Del Sol. He's got vast experience and he has um, a lot of great answers to your questions. And um, before I go, I just, you know, one, one advice I, I, I have um, for you is, you know, the beautiful thing about learning is nobody can take it away from you. Wow. Education really is your trump card because no matter what it is you choose to do in life, it's the solid foundation on which to fall back on. I have a degree in political science and I work in the field of marketing. 
And what that degree has allowed me to do is to always go back on, you know, I, I create marketing campaigns from having a thesis, identifying all the points, and then a wonderful conclusion. And, and it, it is my value add. And when I think about all the rooms that I'm invited to, without an education, that would not be possible. So don't ever count yourself out. And, and an education allows for you to be included. And so you always want to have that ace up your sleeve. So regardless of, of your, the, the challenges and the, the hardships, and, and, and there's a lot of, of things that will happen in your path in your academic journey, but know that the BBP is here for you. We're here, I'm here, Ed Del Sol is here, we've got a board of directors, we've got advisors, we've got a community. You've got a community that's here to support you to get through to the finish line. So we'll have a lot of opportunities by getting an education, take advantage of every single one of them. And if ever you feel you fall short in any area as you go through, give the BVP a call. We're here for you. This is our purpose. We want to see a strong community of people that look like me, that look like Ed, that look like Uju succeed. So just know that we're here for you. Thank you very much and apply, apply early before the deadline. And um, we wish you the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nadine. Um, I hope you guys took a lot because there were lots of nuggets in there. So um, take advantage of the opportunity and just apply, right? Just put in your best foot forward and you never know. You could just be the one bagging uh, some scholarship. And I want to really appreciate every single one of you for coming on. Uh, like we mentioned earlier, we have over a thousand you know, applicants coming in now, but we don't have a thousand here. Like the fact that you guys showed up to you know, ask questions to get more and to add to your um, application really goes a lot, to, go, says a lot about you. And so we appreciate you for showing up. And so uh, we don't have a lot of time, so we're just gonna go right into it and right into questions. And um, I believe you're here because you have questions. So um, who wants to go first? If you are not comfortable talking about your questions or putting up your video, you can just post it on the chat room and I will read it out. All right, but if you if you want to um, ask a question, just raise your hand and I'll call upon you and you can speak. Hi, hi. Hi, what's your name? My name is Pascal. I was going to ask a quick question. Okay, hi Pascal, go ahead. Yeah, so first question is, um, do, do you have age restrictions for the scholarship? like age or level of education? No, there are not age restrictions, right? As long as you have, um, you have access or you have an admission to a Canadian college or university and you want to go to school, you have, you have all the documents that you need to put in an application. Of course, there are no age, you just have to be 18 years and above, I believe. Oh, you, you just said something now. You said Canadian institution. So if you're schooling out of Canada, does that disqualify you? Yes, but that was a different question than you asked the first. You were asking for age, right? Yeah. Okay. But yes, this is um, predominantly for people who are um, attending Canadian schools and um, uh, who, have, who currently have an admission to study in a Canadian college or university. So if you're studying outside of Canada, you're automatically disqualified. Uh, well, I wouldn't, it, it would still be great if you put in an application, but the priority will be given to people who have um, admissions into a Canadian school. That's currently what is stated as the criteria. Okay. Uh, and so, then it says, so this is part of why we're trying to find out why we need to put our SIN number before proceeding to the next stages of the application. So if we knew all of this ahead of time, then probably would say, okay, I'm not eligible, then I wouldn't go forward. Okay. So can I can I add a couple of comments there, Uju? Yes, of course. Um, the the SIN number, the requirement for the SIN number is because the scholarship award is a taxable item. So I I understand that it's for government purposes. So we're not asking for it. And by the way, if you if you don't complete the application the information is discarded. So I want to give you the assurance that your information is safe. Um, one, one, again, as these questions come, we refine the scholarship process. It's, it's an ever-evolving thing. 
The one exception I would, I would suggest right now, uh, because we are primarily for Canadian colleges, is if you are participating in a school overseas that is a Canadian partnered location. So we have Canadian schools that are working in partnership with other colleges. If that is one of the um, schools you're going to, then we could probably look at it as an exception even now. Although we don't have the overseas support finalized, we are pr primarily helping students in Canadian universities. But if the overseas location you're looking at is a Canadian partnered school and you are in a program that is Canadian partnered, um, please identify that and we will look at it uh, as an exception. Thanks for this clarification. Uh, if I may ask one more thing, like basically I was thinking this, the wow. aim of the scholarship, uh, the goal or the aim of the scholarship I was thinking is, you know, to support black students to move to the next level academically. And then um, I, I didn't know if you were schooling out of Canada. So if this school were to be in the U.S., would it still be eligible? Well, again, if it's, a, if it's a Canadian partnered program, I want to make that very clear distinction. Um, I'm not, my guess I'm not is very... if, if, it's a, if it's a U.S. location, it probably mm -hmm. will not qualify because we tend to have very few Canadian partnered programs in the U.S. Okay. But we do. I, I know we, we've had one in Antigua that I know of. We have a couple in China and a couple of other locations around the world. I know the school I'm with, we send students to Panama routinely. So again, if it is in one of these programs where there is a very clear and tangible Canadian educational relationship, we will look at that as an exception. Okay. All right. Thank you Thank so you, much. Thank you, Pascal. I hope that clarifies. Uh, we have another question. I think, Gabriel, you raised your hand. So please go ahead and unmute yourself and ask your question. Hello, my name is Gabrielle. Um, my question is about the requirement for the letters of recommendation to have letterhead. Um, if you're having an individual who is, for example, a music instructor who doesn't work with a company, but they are teaching lessons, um, do they need, if they were to use a letterhead that just includes their name and uh, location, and phone number is that sufficient or do you need to have someone who is using letterhead from an organization awesome thank you for that question so we we admit we acknowledge the fact that you could have mentors who uh, must probably work for themselves so even if they don't have a formal letterhead as long as they have their name and their um, email their number their you know designations on there it's it's I think it's um, it suffices right and the important thing is that this is someone who's credible and also who's giving credible information about you right so um, if you can get a letterhead from a corporation that they work with great or their corporation great but if not just it's what's important to us is that we can vouch for we can see something that vouch for, for the credibility of your um, who your referrals are right does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Awesome. Do you have any other questions? Um, I don't think so. I think one of them was just answered. So. Okay, awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you. Craig, I know you raised your hand a couple of minutes ago. Uh, do you have a question? Uh, hi, good day. Yes, I do. Uh, my name is Craig. Um, I have two questions. Would that be okay? Sure, that's fine. Okay, my first question is, um, one of my, um, my professors who's writing a letter of recommendation, she wrote it earlier in February, but it's not addressed to the BP, BBPA. I contacted her asking her and she said, sure, no problem, but she would prefer if I send the letter that sent to the university, if it would be possible for me to forward that letter because due to the current crisis, she's unable to write a letter on such short notice. And I found out about the BBPA just um, five days ago. So, would it so you have the letter? Yeah, she had. She emailed it to me, but it's it's addressed to whom it may concern. Okay, and so she she wouldn't be able to edit it to have the BBPA's address, like address it to the BBPA. Address it to the BBPA, and it was a general letter recommending me for um, the course I had applied. Would that be acceptable? 
Yeah, um, well, if I think it's, a, Edmund, do you want to jump in that? Because I think it's a, sure, accept, sure, acceptable. Um, can, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, is the, is Craig it is, is it? Yes, it is. Craig, is it a hard copy or a soft copy? It's a soft copy. She emailed okay, it to so, me. So I would say, yeah. is she, um, is she unable to, physically unable to type? Because all she needs to do is to take the same letter and just do, can somebody mute please? I think we're having a lot of uh, feedback. Um, Gabriel, can to, you mute yourself? Yeah. Thank you. All she needs to do is to mute the, uh, sorry, not mute, to edit the letter and upload it into the link that you will send her. Uh, I, it probably shouldn't take three to five minutes of her time. So the yeah. letter itself is fine. All we need her to do is to revalidate the letter by, by just putting it to the BBP and sending it from her to us via yeah. the electronic link that you will send her. I asked her and she, because you know she's a physician and she's very occupied and I didn't want to be too pressing so I said I could um I could just find out if that would be okay. Okay, but can she just can she resend the same letter to us? Just upload the letter and send it to us? Can she do that? Okay, so you'd prefer her okay, I could ask her that. Yeah, it needs to come yeah. from the person. That's the one requirement we have. It needs to come from them to us directly. And it's we we put this online. Yes. So she there's really nothing for her to do other than just upload the link the letter and send it to us. Okay. And if she emails the letter to me in a PDF protected form, can I upload it directly? Uh, we'd rather it come directly from her. We're trying to put the same standards in place for everyone to yes. protect the integrity of the process. Understood. Yeah, um, so if you go through your application process, you would see yes. that there's a section that asks, asks you for the name of your referral and the email. So what you need to do is just put her name, put her email, and a secure link will be sent to her where she can upload um, the, the letter herself. Letter. Understood. And my second question is, if my, if my course is an entire year, not between September and April, it's from September until the end of the course, am I to put a budget for September to April or put a budget for the end, just year, September to September, September to August, if you understand what I'm saying? I, I would say put a budget for whatever period you're studying. Okay. Okay. Yes. I, I, we, we have flexible programs right now. I teach in a place where we have semesters r running continuously. And okay. some people will do a program over like four continuous semesters. So put, put, the, put the best information you have to reflect your educational situation. Thank you. Okay. You're yes, right. uh, I believe somebody else asked that question at the last session. So just put in the, if it's a whole year for your program, just put it so we have a proper picture of what um, you're going in for. Uh, we have a couple of questions from Hello. the chat. So, uh, um, Craig, were we done with you? Yes, you were. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Edmund, do you want to say something? Oh, no, no. I was just going to ask if we were done with Craig, if we had answered Craig's questions. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, so we're going to head to the chat room. There are a couple of them coming in here. Uh, this is from Jennifer. And she says, I'm starting university in, in September. And so far, first semester is online. Um, oh, I think I just lost that ch chat. Okay. And it says so far, first semester is online, so I am staying home. But they are not sure about second semester. Uh, so with this for the budget, should I count in as if I'm going to residence or not? Yeah, I know that's a, that's a tricky one because um, some schools are saying that they will be back. So here's what I would suggest, Jennifer. We, um, we want you to give us honest information, okay? And it, it seems like the honor system plays a part here. If we, if we over donate to you, we are under donating to other people. Um, and second, when you, if you apply next year, we will look at the, and this is one of the things we're putting in place, to look at the expenditures versus the amount granted, right? So I would say for your own personal integrity, again, we're building a professional program here for professional people to help you build your professionalism. So one, we're looking for authenticity and integrity from you uh, that the information you give us is correct. And I would say, err on the side of being conservative. If there is a high probability that you will go back to school and you need to design your, your financial plan for somebody who has to travel or to relocate to school, then do that. But we want the information coming from you to be honest. 
Awesome, thank you. This is a question from Keisha Brissett. And she says, could we speak to the requirements about being a part of other programs offered by the BBPA? Um, I know Ms. Spencer mentioned it. I just, want, I just wasn't clear about it. Okay, yes, yeah, she talked about the different, the three different programs, the financial literacy program, the HR program, as well as mentorship program. So if you go on the bbpa.org website, um, on the programs you see, um, courses there you see mentorship program you see financial literacy right now financial literacy course happens every saturday so you can sign up for um one or two of them and just get information just get yourself padded with as many as much information as you can because we're not just the scholarship is not just about you know giving money and helping with tuition is also just generally building your well-being right so whether financial well-being whether giving you tools mentorship tools just so that you are an all you you have value all round so um so go on the website you see other programs sign on and um join the financial literacy join the mentorship you can pick any one of those and um we'll go from there uh look at other questions this I saw one someone, would you i saw somebody just saying they missed a response because the connection dropped was that somebody we were talking with and they may have missed a response? Oh, Jennifer. Okay, I have to look for her first question. I think she was the one talking about staying at home. Yes, um, when she said the fall semester was you know, going to be staying at home. Do you want to speak to that again? Yeah, so Jennifer, we, I was suggesting that um, give us the best information you have. You can go back and play my first response. I won't be as long this time. Give us the best information that you have. Uh, if you are going to, if you are very likely going to be back in school, then err on the side of being conservative and put that in your numbers, but do try to make the numbers as accurate as possible because we will review over time the kinds of funds we've donated to other people. Awesome, thank you, Edmund. Alexa says, hi, BBPA, hi. It states in the application guide that we need to include a personal essay However, there's no attachment slot in the scholarship portal. Where do we attach it? Or does the portal tab asking for extracurriculars and achievements it? Um, actually, that is it. So what you have to do is, um, like you rightly noted, just within your um, application, you would see different tabs where you can put in your essays. So essays about community service, essay about um, extracurricular activity, essay about, there's another essay about what your goals are post-secondary, like after school. So you can put in, um, these are opportunities, three opportunities where you can put in um, stuff about your personal goals and, and dreams and just create a really robust and great story about yourself. So no, you don't need to attach any external document. Those spaces that were provided within your application is just, um, is just it. Um, Galaxy A8 is raising his or her hand. So please go ahead, unmute yourself and ask your question. Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, Mike, I have two questions. One, I, I have submitted the application already online. However, I got information that I have to pay for my tuition. First, I thought I was not going to pay tuition. So my question is, how can I actually submit a updated budget synopsis? Because I've already submitted the application already. Okay, Edmund, do you um, want to speak to that? I think we can, can you, I, I would suggest take the person's name and um, we go to Roy and ask Roy just to reactivate it as if it was yeah, not so, time to submit it. Okay, and great. So what I would advise, um, I didn't get your name, I'm sorry, but what I would advise is send an email to office at bbpa.com.org and we would, um, uh, you know, stating this request and we would find a way to reopen your application as long as it's within now and the deadline 15th, we can reopen your application and have you update whatever you need to update. But it has to be, the request has to come in and it has to be done within the deadline because we, we wouldn't um, extend, we wouldn't should extend be doing it. Now as, you should be doing it now as you speak, Ujo. Just You should be doing it right now. Yeah, yeah. So just send the email. Yeah, yeah send an email to scholarships at bbpa.org or 
office at bbpa.org. Both okay. emails, you will get a response. And my second question quickly is that I have uploaded all the necessary documentations that came in and um, the, the professor sent me them directly and I uploaded them. Should I ask them to send it directly now? What document are you referring to? I'm referring to the, 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 um, the letter of recommendation from the professor. Victoria School, Nishima. Uh, sorry, please, if you're not asking questions, please mute yourself. Thank you. Uh, so yes, you're referring to letter of recommendations. The letter of recommendation that came, that, yeah, came from my professor. It was sent to me. I uploaded it onto the website already, the application platform. Okay. And it, it was on a letterheaded paper? Letterhead signed by the professor, letterhead from the university signed by the professor. Okay. It's that's mine. fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you okay. so much. You're welcome. Um, I'm just going, looking at the chat to see if I have any more questions. Hi, uh, my is name is Julia. Hi, Julia. Hello. Hi. Um, uh, I schooled, so my high school was in Africa. Um, do I, up, do I update it here? Um, would you be needing, would you be needing any other information from my high school? Was your high school the last, um, school you went to before now? No. Which was your most recent school? I, w I also had my first degree in, in Nigeria as, as well. Okay. Then I went to Makiwan and now I'm at the University of Victoria. Okay, so I would say you can update your most recent so you don't necessarily have to go all the way to high school. So you can update yeah. with your most recent um, transcript or academic uh, documents and then okay. um, add up your referrals, your essays, and all of that just to put in your best foot forward. Okay, sounds good. But it, 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 it wouldn't let me go to the next one. Like the high school is on red, which means that I have to update it. So should I just put the name and then um, not provide any other information with regards to that? Just the name is enough. Yeah, so you can put a name, but when it comes to okay. asking for um, transcripts and all, your most recent mm -hmm. one would work. Okay, sounds good. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, bye. Uh, please, if you want to ask any question, just raise your hand. I'll see you, and then I'll call you to ask a question. Um, we still have a couple in the chat room, so I'm just going to go ahead and read it. Um, Someone says, for, confid for, for confidentiality, my references prefer to email their recommendation letters directly to the BBPA. Is it okay if you receive my letters via email? No, please, we do not receive emails via, uh, we do not receive any documents, referral or anything via email or hard copy. However, if you go on your application process and when it comes to, when you get to the part of, of um, putting in referral or recommendation letters, you have an option to put the person's name and email there and we will send the person a secure link where they can upload or type in their letter of recommendation. So the person will be covered. You wouldn't have to see their letter of recommendation and we would receive it. I hope that answers your question. So, um, so that covers confidentiality. Uh, Fauzia, um, I hope I got your name correctly. Your hands are raised. Please go ahead and ask your question. Thanks. Uh, it's the same to the question around the reference letter. So I, if I put the contact details of the references on the online application, how do I know it's automatically sent to BPPA, the link? is Because I need to make sure I have three references and then it's automatic? Before I yes, exactly. Okay. So once you put all three references, you put all their names, make sure their emails are correct, automatically they get a link notifying them that you have asked them to send a, uh, a referral or recommendation letter and they will. They would also receive reminders, maybe, you know, the deadline is approaching, they'll receive reminders to get the letters uploaded. And, um, and yes, so if they don't upload it, your application would not be complete. Okay, and the deadline is the 15th at 5 p.m.? Yes, 15th at midnight rather, not 5 p.m. Midnight, okay, perfect, thank you. All right, Feiyi Sayo, um, I hope I got your name correctly. Please go ahead uh, and ask your question. Yeah, it's Feiyi Sayo. Um, I'll just um, wanted to ask regarding to um, 
one is the finance um sorry one is the references that you just mentioned so if the reference um that we put down does not get back to you guys by the 15th at 5 p.m our application will not be completed right mm -hmm. yes and also um regarding to the um sorry i was a bit late so you guys you might already said this already regarding to the budget um synopsis like what did you guys want in it you might already said it by came i joined late the budget yeah. synopsis what do you guys want in the budget so if you go on the website the bbpa website there is a sample budget synopsis there that has a framework that you can go with right so if you go on bbpa.org slash how to apply you would see it right there uh, an exa uh, a pdf of the budget synopsis uh, as well as an application guide and you can use that to create your own okay right? it's and a also, pdf but you can just edit it right okay okay and also for where it says the donor determined selection criteria i'm not too sure like i'm not too sure i understand um what that um section is about so where we were asked to select more than three with like can you just explain that i, I don't get what that section is about okay so it says donor selected criteria because we have a couple of donors who um have preferences to the people that they're awarding um uh, scholarships too. It could be someone, they could be looking for a student who has interest in STEM or in life sciences or in law or um, different preferences. So we want you to match, we want to be able to match um, students with these donor preferences. So we need you to show which one applies to you. So if you are someone who's very interested in law, you would click law and then um, a donor who has that as a criteria, it'll be easy for us to, you know, match against that if you, if you understand what I mean. Does that clarify? Okay, so, yeah, it clarifies it. So when it's, um, so I guess then after that, I just have to like explain why I'm interested in law. Is that what the essay section is about then? Yeah, so example. I would advise that you highlight some of these in your essay. You know, like like I said, this the essay is an opportunity for you to sell yourself and uh, tell your best story. So if you really want to highlight the fact that, you know, you, you want a career in law and, you know, you can tell your story around that. If you're interested in, in a scholarship, like one of the scholarships, the Majuri Scholarship is targeted to women and people that are not binary so if that's something that you resonate with you, it will be i would advise that you highlight that in your essays as well and also um just so that we can match donor criteria and applicants okay all right then yeah that's that'll be all my questions. thank you okay uh nadine has her hand raised nadine, yeah I, I just wanted if you could tell them for example a little bit more of the majority scholarship details just so they could hear what you know donor selected um, criteria would look like. Also for the Stanley um, Christine Julian scholarship, they're looking to fund any, it, it's, that one's 5,000 per year for, and, and there's, there'll be two of them for 5,000. And that is given to any student pursuing entrepreneurship or business studies. And, you know, mm -hmm. they, that donor will, will look at the once we've passed the criteria on to them, they will read the essay and then make that selection for, for that particular one. And there's others like the majority one, which Huju will tell you about now. Okay, uh, so like Nadine mentioned, we have uh, one of the new scholarships that came on uh, very recently, Majuri, a very amazing jewelry um, company that's sponsoring one of the uh, scholarships. So if you're sponsoring 10 students, and 5,000 each for one year, one academic year, right? But their donor criteria is their, um, they wanna sponsor a female or uh, a non-binary um, student who there's no minimum GPA, right? So you can just put in any G your, your real GPA and that's fine. But they just wanna see that you are ambitious, you're creative and you're, um, which is something that should reflect in your essay. So that's, that's predominantly their criteria. They're giving 5,000 to 10 students. They're very interested in non-binary ap applicants and women, like female applicants. So if I was, if I, you know, our female applicants, that's something that you want to really highlight in your essay, if that's, some, if that's a, a scholarship you're interested in. But then there are other ones as well. So apart from a jury, there are also other scholarships that you can look at and see, oh, okay, this is a criteria that I that I resonate with and then I want to click that in the donor donor selection criteria I hope that um, explains for everyone 
So what, how did you said Majuri? Was what you called it? Majuri? Okay. Majuri. So it's a very new scholarship that just, uh, we literally just announced it today. And so um, it would be, it would be reflected on the website in literally a couple of minutes from now. Um, but it's, it's Majuri, M-E-J-U. R I yes, Majuri scholarship yeah. So they're a jewelry store, so you can even oh um, yeah, I know that. Google, oh, yeah. yeah, you can do a Google search and you would find us. Okay, yeah, okay. Right? Uh, Ojo, I, think Ojo, I think more. Ojo, I think more than the name, it's the it's the program that they are supporting, right? Exactly. So, so once so, the students are clear about their program intentions, they will put themselves in that stream. Exactly. So uh, if, if um, after this call, you can refresh the website and you would see details about the Majuri scholarship. So you would see what Majuri is really looking for, um, which is female applicants or non-binary applicants. Uh, you don't need to have a very high GPA. You, they just need to see that you're enthusiastic, you're ambitious, and um, you're you know, just creative about pursuing your your post secondary, your post your goals academically. Um, so, so, then, so, uh, one more thing regarding that. So I'm not directly applying to the majority. I'm just have to select like the what after reading about um on what they want, I just have to go on the donor criterion and select aspects that apply to the majority. Yes, exactly. If okay. it applies to you as well, yes. Okay. Adana, please go ahead and ask your question. Oh, uh, hi. I came online, uh, I came on the live, the IG live question like we had like a few days back and you mentioned something about a budget, like there's an app for like inputting your budget, but like, I can't find anything. I'm on okay, the website. Okay, so I, I didn't say it's an app. I said it's a, it's a framework that you oh, yeah. can, you know, you, you look at and just edit to fit yourself. It's on the website. Um, go on the bbpa.org slash how to apply and just read the information there and you would see one of the paragraphs that um, highlights budget synopsis sample and you can click there and it would take you to where you can find the budget synopsis. There's also the same, <clears throat> excuse me, it's the same paragraph where you find the application guide as well. So if you just carefully read through it, you will find it. Okay, thank you. Right. You're welcome. Um, Fauza, do you also have a question? Yes, uh, just uh, um, in terms of the scholarship, is there any of them that's targeted to master, just to PhD level? So um, right now, I think most of them are post secondary and also post uh, like postgraduate there are a few few scholarships that are also postgraduate you just have to specify in your essay what your situation is like where you are and we would see all of that as well with the with the documents that you would upload your transcript and all of that stuff so yeah some of the some of the donors don't particularly specify whether you have to be a postgraduate or graduate student which is a good thing, so it means that it can go either way. So I would just um, say, put your best foot forward, put your your um, documents in, and when they look at it, they see that you fit what they're looking for and you'll be awarded. Last question, the teacher recommendation, uh, what is the criteria? Is it someone that taught you in your undergrad or like what's the criteria for the teacher recommendation? Um, teacher recommendation, I'll say it's just it, right? Someone who taught you, but it would most importantly, someone who also had a really, or has a relationship with you, someone who can vouch for your character, um, your, you know, leadership skills. So you don't just want to reach out to any teacher just because they taught you. You want to reach out to someone who, even though, you know, they taught you, they also had a relationship with you. Maybe someone who was also involved in maybe some extracurricular activity with you as well. But just look through your um, network and see any teacher that could really um, vouch for your character and your credibility. I hope that answers. Um, so we'll go ahead to the chat room. Um, just trying to see where I stopped. This is from Craig and says, what should the budget synopsis include as a supporting document? Tuition fee from the university, rent information, anything else? Um, yeah, I think I've touched on this already. There is a framework on the website. So all you need to do is simply just go there 
find the budget synopsis and follow the um, outline there. And it's a, it's, it was carefully done, so it would give you all the direction you need in creating your own budget synopsis. This is from um, Faduma. I forgot to mention to my referee to include the address mentioned on your website. Um, which is the BBPA National Scholarship. Should I ask them to resubmit it with that included as well? I wasn't sure if it was okay or not since they already submitted it. So the, the reason we put the, the address there was so that your um, referral um, properly addresses their letter, right? So it doesn't, so we know that they're giving their letter, they know who they're giving the letter to, they know that they're vouching for this person to this organization. And that's why we um, highlighted that it should be um, addressed to us. So if they can do it again, that would be great. So um, I would say reach out to them before the deadline and um, good luck. I'll just take another question. If you've been out of school, this is from Jay. If you've been out of school for several years and don't have contact with a school teacher who can write a letter of recommendation in place of your teacher, what do you do? Edmund, I will let you answer that question. So if you've been out of school, I didn't hear part, if you've been out of school and? If you've been out of school for a while and you don't have contact with a school teacher who can write a letter of recommendation in place of a teacher, what do you do? So what, what is out of, I'm curious, how, what money, what does a person mean by out of school for a while? How long is that? Um, I don't know so, if you can, seven so, years. So, he says seven years. He or she okay, says seven, seven years. years. Okay, so I, I would say that anything past a year is probably not meaningful. And this is a point I raised before. Try to make your references as current as possible so the people talking about you are speaking about the modern you, not a past version of yourself. So if you don't have um, an academic reference, in this case, which would make sense, then get another a community reference, right? And what I would suggest is if you haven't been in school for seven years, you're probably in working. So you could probably substitute a work reference instead of the academic reference, and then still have your community reference as that to fulfill that role. So the whole idea of somebody who's looking at you develop uh, you could substitute a re reliable work um, authority instead of a teacher. That would be my recommendation. Awesome. Thank you, Edmund. This is from Alexis. And um, for the letter recommendation, I read both the FAQ and application guidelines. It has a self-upload option for letter of recommendation. Nowhere does it state that we need to have the reference person upload the document. At this late stage, is it possible to still do self-upload so that we're not depending on them for our submission. A lot of us asked for letters and received PDF. Are all scholarships requiring this? Okay, so now you can, if you have, if you already have your letter of recommendation, signed, addressed, letterheaded, and all of that by yourself, you can self-upload. On your application uh, profile, you have two options. You can either self-upload or you can put the name of your referral and a link will be sent to him or her to send your referral letter right we put in we put that in because we wanted to you know the confidentiality clause because a lot of the referrals wanted to send their referral letter or or their recommendation letter directly to the organization and so we had that option as well so um in summary if you have your letter of recommendation already it's pdf it's addressed to the organization it's signed by your um by your referral and uh, the name, address, and all of that is there, you please by all means self-upload, right? But if, you, if your um, referral would rather do that directly themselves, then just put their name and their email and we'll send them a secure link for them to upload themselves. Fabrice, okay. as- Would you just a thought? Um, I mean, we're suffering some growing pains because it seems to me that the link isn't going through reliably or has not gone through as reliably as we thought. Right. It is going through. The reason, um, some complaints is maybe they have VPN. Some people, um, some, rec some referrals get back to us and say they can't upload either because um, they have VPN blocking some access. And so immediately we let them know to use either another browser 
or to um, upload without their VPN. So we have Roy constantly responding to those okay, emails. Okay. So then maybe go back to, I think Craig, was it the very first person we were talking about, Craig, who had that anonymous letter? Mm -hmm. Um, maybe we should give Craig a, a buy because I think we're making a couple of exceptions for other people. Maybe you should just tell Craig that to whom it may concern letter that he got from the physician, um, he can upload it and go with that. Yeah, but Craig's concern was it was not addressed uh, to us. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. like that was, that could have been any letter to anybody. anybody. Right? That's why if, we it, wanted... if it's coming from the person, if it's coming from the referee and the referee has identified themselves, and it is about Craig, I still think we, we, at this point, I think we should accept it. We will tighten up the process next, next year, but I think we can probably expedite things for him right now. Okay. So Craig, you can self-upload self as long as, you know, it's, it's uh, signed and so um, just so that we save time and not uh, keep you out of it. Okay. Yeah. He says okay. it's signed, it's letter -head letterheaded and all of that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you can go That's ahead and true. Uh, Fabrice, please go ahead and ask your question. Hi, I'm um, sorry. I just have two quick questions um, regarding the budget synopsis. And um, my first question is, where it says, um, there's one column that says amount and one that says amount per month. Um, does the amount column refer to the, the total amount of all the expenses that we're going to the estimated expenses and my second question is regarding the financial resources and income like one says that um to include the bank balance at the beginning of the academic year but i don't know exactly how much i'm gonna have since i'm working this summer but i don't know how much i'm gonna spend and also um the osap or government assistance um i don't know exactly so like should we just should it just be an estimation or um, do you need an exact um, amount? Okay, you, I'm going to let Edmund take yeah. that. So, so a couple of suggestions. Um, I would say heading into school, because you're going to be asking for scholarships, spend as little as possible. Um, and then you have some sense of how much money you're going to make. So, you know, your, your paycheck has, a, has an amount on it. You can do some estimation. Uh, keep the, keep the uh, expenditures to a minimum, so you could have some sense of how much money you will have. And you can, if you do this in a spreadsheet, you can edit. You can say tentative or projected OSAP earnings or projected OSAP support will be so much. And then you will give a projected amount there. So there, there is, everybody's situation is different. So what we look for from you is accurate and, um, and, re and relevant data. So yes, there is room to show the contingencies, if you will, as for how much you're sure you have, you will have versus how much you are sure that you might have. And, and we want to see that, that, that information clearly laid out. Does that answer your question? Um, yes, it does. Thank you. OK. Awesome. So um, we have 11 minutes to the end of this. And so we have room to take about two or three more questions. So um, yeah, I'm just going to go to the chat room and look for another. This is from Eki. And the question is, can you please confirm that the scholarship application is fully submitted online and that we are not mailing anything to the BBPA office? Yes, we confirm categorically. All documents should be submitted online. Nothing should be mailed to the office. Um, okay, one more question from Shanice. I, I already submitted my application, but under the expansion of social donor selection criteria, I wrote about my achievements in my chosen category in bullet point form. You've been using the word essay in, ref, in referring to the written sections of the application. So should I somehow get my application reopened and rewrite the section in more of an essay format? Um, so yeah, it depends on you. If you feel like what you wrote currently doesn't particularly sell your sell, you know, your story in the best way possible, then you can always like go back and edit as long as it's between now and the deadline, which is Wednesday. What I would say is just email scholarships at bbpa.org or office at bbpa.org and we'll get your application reopened so you can, you know, um, edit. We've been saying essays because that's the, the, 
general way of you know just telling your story and we've been telling people that what, however it is that you write however you choose to write just make sure you're telling your best story whether it's your achievements your goals aspirations everything just tell your best story put yourself in your best light right because like we mentioned we have over a thousand applicants coming in so you really want to shine okay so if you want to go back and edit your application even if you submit it just send an email to scholarships at bbpa.org or office at bbpa.org and we will um, reopen your application we have a couple of okay um alexis has hand raised so you yeah you'll be the second to last question okay go ahead yes <laughs> so can you hear me guys yes i can okay perfect uh so ryerson university has something called digitary so it's a new system where we get a chance to ask or request for um, official transcripts. Um, the only issue with this system is that you can only, as the person, um, basically get a link and send it to the BBPA via email or, or whatever. And uh, from there, I don't know like how best to go about it because if we need to be having an actual person submit the um, official transcript, how will be the that be possible, right? So if it's all being done digitally, not by an actual administrator. So I don't know how to go around this so that I can actually submit an application. For all those, those in uh, Ryerson University, like applying, this will be an issue. So how best to go about that? So with the digital process, can you get access to the transcript? Do you have the transcript? Yes, and it's going to be official because I we that's what we pay for. So, so I don't know how to best do this so that oh, you guys so that's, can. Oh, that's that's simple it. then. So if you have the official transcript, please upload it. But what if it's just a link? Because that's the situation. Like it's saying that it's just going to be, and I can pull it up here. Um, it okay. Says, so what happens if if I'm it's sorry. a link? You can literally um, save. You can save PDF a document on the link. You can try uh, control print and mm -hmm. then save it as a PDF and then upload. Excellent. So then that will be deemed as, as uh, official then? Yes, as long as okay. that's what your school says is official. Yes. So do we need to provide documentation to state that, hey, this is actually official? Because there's no slot to do that extra step. I would just suggest you note that in your own discussion of your story, just as a PS. PS, uh, my school provides uh, transcripts via an electronic system. I have to download the PDF. I have submitted this to you, blah, blah, blah. Very short note to that event. Okay, sounds good to me. Yeah. Okay, so we'll take the last question from Anna Meh. Uh, so just unmute yourself and just ask, please, very quickly, because we are seven minutes out. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so I had a few, well, I'll try to just ask two. Um, so I sent an email earlier regarding a transcript. Um, I might not be able to get my most updated version of my transcript from my high school. So I have one from October 2019, but I also have like an OUAC screenshot of like my grade 11 and grade 12 marks. Would it be okay to somehow merge the two of them into one PDF file? So you have like that old um, transcript as well as this, like my grade 12 marks? Sure. If you can, if you have a PDF combiner, do it. Go ahead and do okay. it. Do okay. It. And then secondly, for the resume, um, would you want information, um, including like personal information, such as my email and like address and stuff, or should I just keep it straight to like work experience and those aspects? I think the application form asks for the for those details, so then it's not critical to have them on the resume. Okay. Tell us about yourself. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Edmund, do we have time for any more questions? Sure, sure, we have time. Let's give, let's get, try to as many. I'm just going to talk for about one minute to close off. Uh, take okay. questions. Awesome, Sarah, go ahead. Okay, hi. So I wanted to ask if you could speak about the TD Bank scholarship. I think it's on the website, but I didn't really understand their criteria. Awesome. So the TD Bank scholarship, uh, there are a lot of scholarships there. Hopefully you'll mix it up. But it's a, um, it's awarded. It's five thousand dollars. That is. Can you hear me? I, I can actually. I can speak to that actually. Uju. Okay. Can you hear me? I can know you are still there. Okay. Yes, we can see. Yes, you. I'm still here. I'm, 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 I'm over now with my little darling granddaughter, as you can see. Um, yes. So TD is in its final two years of um, their scholarship. It's seven thousand. Per year and this year 
two scholarships will be given of 7,000 each. And it, it goes into the general scholarship criteria for the TV scholarship. Awesome. Sarah, does that answer your question? So it's a general criteria. So you don't necessarily have to do anything um, uh, specific or have to highlight any specific um, um, uh, need or flavor. So you just need to put your best foot forward and then you could easily, you know, get a TD scholarship depending on the strength of your application, right? So what we know for sure is it's a general, general scholarship and it's $7,000 for two students. I see. Okay. Thank you so much. And lastly, just really quickly, uh, in the donor section, there, it says that we must choose three like criteria, like if you're from a single parent family or um, if you are in STEM and so on. What about if you like qualify for more than three? So you can click as many as you want, right? But um, priority will be given to the, your first three, right? And it would be great if you can also add your preference in your essays as well, just so that we can uh, match all of this and we can s tell a wholesome story about where your goals are, what your goals are and where your, your path is headed, right? So if you have more than three, you can click it. But uh, in fairness, everybody would, for everyone, we're attending to the, the first three. Yeah, I, I, just to clarify, to reinforce what Uju said, for almost every applicant, you could click a, a ton of these things, right? But when you write your story, try to figure out what's most important to you and make that message come forward and support that in your choices. Okay, thank you so much. Okay. You're welcome. Um, so I think I'll just take one more from Shanice. My university already submitted my official transcript via Canada Post weeks ago to the BBPA office before there was this teacher upload option. Is this fine to have these hard copy transcripts that have already been sent? Edmund, do you want to take that? Yeah, if I, we, we were doing work on the form. So if you were very on the ball and you sent it early, we will have to go with the paper transcripts. Let's just bite the bullet and do this. Okay? Okay. All right, I think that's all we have for today. Um, Edmund, I'm just gonna give the floor to you to give a, a final um, final advice to our applicants as they use yeah. the next few days to put in their best application. Okay, so guys, I, I, as I am uh, doing the uh, work on the scholarship and, and talking to reviewers and so on, one of the interesting stories I saw a couple of days ago is that it's becoming increasingly hard for non-educated people to live in cities. I, I want you guys to think about that. Cities are really the hub of where things are happening in the future. And it's becoming increasingly hard for non-college educated people to continue to live in cities because they just can't afford it. So this is not a trivial decision you're making here, right? It's a very, very serious decision you're making about your life and the possibilities that you open up for yourself, for your children, for your relatives, and so on. So do take the time to apply um, as completely as possible, finish everything we ask you to do on this application, and put your best foot forward, and we'll, give, we'll do the best we can to give you the scholarship if you deserve it. Thank you so much, Edmund. Um, Nadine and Nola, do you want to say bye to everyone? <laughs> Goodbye, everyone. Thank you very much. And as our chair says, and you have said, you know, put your best foot forward. Remember, life will give you what you ask of it. You want to, um, yeah, just, just apply. And uh, thank you for your time. And we wish you all the best. Thank you so much, everyone. We're looking forward to seeing all your applications come in, put in your best foot forward, and we wish you the very best. All right? Enjoy the rest of your evening.